X, Y, and Z, and that I needed to come home. That's all I had to hear. So look off the phone with her. I called my boss, and I'm like, I'm not going to be at work today, tomorrow. I need to go home. There's something wrong with my daddy. I'm going home. And recorded the song like three months ago to the store. I'm going to need me like three months. I wrote the four wheels at a half house, serving the city ass back to the half house. And I ain't got to say what no, because that little nigga know if I ask, he going to cop out. It was on my first mission. I rolled down the window, but OG had told me to hop out. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Kay, and I am back with another video. I am back, back, big, big, with another video. So, y'all, as y'all can see, I'm by myself. Um, today is going to be a pretty different video. I decided that it was best for me to record this by myself because... Because, okay? I wanted to have a mental health check-in with y'all, okay? I want to have a mental health check-in because there are so many people struggling with mental health, me included, and a lot of people don't talk about this topic like it's a stigma. Like, there's a stigma against mental health, especially in the black community, and I don't understand. Like, I don't understand. So a lot of y'all don't know. I just received my bachelor's in social work with a minor in psychology. So I have been learning about the brain and mental health and, you know, how to interact with people and stuff like that. So I know when I'm not in the right space of mental health. I know when I'm not myself. I know when I'm not feeling my best. I know all of that. So today i woke up not feeling good at all okay so make sure y'all like comment and subscribe um it's a little different sitting here by myself i'm used to sitting here with Tay or something but just make sure y'all like comment and subscribe so that i can continue to give y'all content and if y'all like this real raw content like this just let me know shit and i can whip it up again because Do it like it's your B-Day. Do it like it's your B-Day. But no. <laughs> Alright, y'all. I'm so silly. I just thought that I should do this video by myself because I just haven't been feeling myself. And before we give y'all new content, because all the content up until now is previously recorded old content, you know. Um, so before we give y'all new content, I want to have this mental health check in with y'all because your girl k has not been herself there's been a lot of experiences losses this year that took a toll on me um and i didn't realize how big of a toll it took on me until shit the toll was took and a ticket was booked you know so but let me just get into it so I won't lie, 2021 has been a rough year for me. It's been a very tedious year, to say the least. Um, there's been a lot of blessings, a lot of gains, but there's also been a lot of loss. Um, so, this year I lost my father April 24th. It's, it's hard to talk about because um, I lost my dad, y'all. Like, I literally lost my dad. And, um, sorry. I lost my dad this year, and I wasn't ready for him to go, you know? Um, I wasn't ready for him to go. I wasn't expecting him to go. He was sick for years. He was sick for years, but you know, like, do you ever, do y'all ever get that feeling where it's like, okay, this is gonna happen. I know it's gonna happen. And just because I know it's gonna happen, I'm not prepared for it to happen. You know, like, I know it's gonna happen, but that doesn't mean I'm prepared that it's gonna happen, you know? So I knew my dad was gonna pass away one day but I didn't even think that it was anywhere near the near future I didn't think that it was anywhere 
no time soon. My dad has been sick so long. Even from when I was in high school, he was sick. So from that time to now, it's just, you know, I don't know. I didn't really realize how sick he was until he passed away. It's really hard for me to talk about it because growing up, like, okay, let me pause. Let me rewind. When my mom, before my mom and my dad got a divorce when we were younger, I was like super close to my dad, okay? Super close. I love this man from the bottom of my heart to the tippy tippy top, tippity tip tip tippy my tippy toes. Like, I, I love my dad so much. And then him and my mom ended up getting a divorce when I was like five, six, five, six, I'm gonna say. And then um, after that, it was like he was there, but I just felt like he wasn't there enough, if that makes sense. But we didn't fast forward. We didn't really like rekindle our relationship and get super duper duper close again until... Um, like my sophomore year of high school and all through college like so from like so we've we've been really close like the last we've been close okay <laughs> where we had a good relationship we had a bumpy road and then we got back on track and that's how it should be like after the healing process and everything like that and forgiving we were able to sit down have that conversation and get back on track um so i am grateful that me and my dad we were able to be okay you know we were able to be okay before he passed and um Y'all, it's not too late to rekindle relationships with your parents, with your family members. Like, this is literally something I would not wish on anybody. Like, losing a loss of a family member is bad. But, like, a parent, that's a whole different type of hurt. Like, I'm telling y'all, like, it's a whole different type of hurt. I wouldn't wish it on nobody. I wouldn't wish it on nobody at all because I still find myself about to call this man i still find myself about to tell him about school he was my biggest supporter when it came to school him my mom my granny and my auntie Ava. when they came when it came to school those four they did not play <laughs> they did not play they get my auntie Ava gave me advice because she was in school for nursing my dad he just gave me encouragement and made sure I stayed up here my mom did the same my granny did the same so it's just like <sighs> to lose two of my biggest supporters in one year bro I'm getting on here to say I'm not okay I'm not okay it would be a little bit of time before I am all the way back to me because right now I just don't feel a hundred percent K I feel like I'm like 75 percent K you know like I'm not as upbeat and up lifting as I usually am because like I try to be that way but then a, a thought pops up in my mind or something like that Mental health is real. There's nothing wrong with getting help. There's nothing wrong with seeking help. There's nothing wrong with realizing that you need help. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And if you need a, a better word, assistance. There's nothing wrong with realizing that you need assistance with whatever it is that you need assistance with. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And it took me a while, but... I just got my bachelor's in social work, so I need to make sure I'm okay so I can give my clients um, the best experience, you know, so I can make sure my my clients are, are good. I need to make sure I'm straight too before I can even open myself to receiving other people's 
issues or problems or anything like that this year has not i'm ready for this year to be over okay but i just have to keep telling myself because i keep saying yeah i'm ready for this year to be over i'm ready to start next year but i have to keep telling myself and reminding myself that just because it's going to be a new year or this year is going to be over with that doesn't mean those problems are going to be gone as well that doesn't mean the hurt that i had this year is going to be gone next year because it's a new year it doesn't work like that if it did work like that then it would be a whole bunch of happy motherfuckers in the world okay it would be a whole bunch of happy people in the world but it don't work like that it don't work like that and that's that's the thing you have to realize so a lot of y'all may know but a lot of y'all might not know i live hours away from my family i'm not near my family at all right now um i live hours away from them because i moved away for college um and of those four years of me being away from my family i've had so many losses like so many losses my granddad, my grandma, right off the bat. That was only a couple years ago, a couple months apart. And um, <laughs> then this year I had, this year is my, my dad and my auntie Ava. Like literally every year that I've been in college I've lost a family member if not one two I've lost a family member I'm so family oriented okay I love my family so much like my family means the world to me <sighs> my family means a lot to me and I was raised to be close to my family. I was raised to be, I was, we were raised to look out for each other, okay? Yeah, I have a lot of love for my family. And just to know that I've been gone four years and I haven't visited I haven't really visited home too much. Like, I've been on the holidays and stuff. But this last year, last year, 2021, yeah, 20, no, 2020. 2020, I wasn't able to come home for holidays. I wasn't able to come home for Thanksgiving or Christmas due to COVID. And I just really didn't want to go home and get anybody sick. This is my senior year, y'all. This was my senior year of college so I didn't want to so I was in my internship placement I didn't want to go home get any of my family members sick I didn't want to come back to wherever I was at from wherever I was at and get the children I worked with at DCFS sick I didn't want to get my clients sick but I work when I work with geriatrics so I didn't want to get anybody sick let alone go home and get my family sick i did not want to do that at all and so that's one of my biggest regrets i should have just went home spent the holidays with my family because i, I didn't get to see my daddy i haven't seen my dad in a year in the last in the last time i seen my dad why he was alive it was hooked up to so many tubes it was the day that i had to um it was the day he actually passed um my stepmom she had called me that morning and let me know that they was getting some bad well that she had well that she had called me the day before and told me that they was getting some bad news about my dad and that he wasn't doing too good and xyz and that i needed to come home 
that's all I had to hear. So look off the phone with her. I called my boss and I'm like, I'm not gonna be at work today, tomorrow. I need to go home. There's something wrong with my daddy. I'm going home. She was just like, okay, cool. So I ended up going home. I couldn't see him that day because he was only allowed one visitor a day. And that day when I got down there, it was a Friday. It was a Friday when I got down there. And was it a Friday? I'm pretty sure it was a Friday. I'm pretty sure, I think it was a Friday when I got down there. I think so. So when I came down, it was one day. He only had one visitor. He had already had got his visitor. And by the time I made it there, mind y'all, I'm hours away from home. I got this phone call around like noon. 11 o'clock i didn't make it home make it home until about like six so it was already late when i made it there so i already knew that visiting hours would probably be over the next morning i'm like you know i'm in town i'm going to see my dad da, da, da. so i talked to my stepmom and made sure it was okay that i be his one visitor that saturday morning she said it was okay and everything like that so early early that morning I went to the hospital but on the way to the hospital it was just raining and me I can feel like I could feel energy and vibes and stuff like that so like the energy like when it was just raining it was just so heavy like I just felt so heavy like my heart was just heavy my body was heavy it was sort of like, I had to ask my mom to ride with me because it was raining so bad like it was raining bad and I asked my mom to ride with me overnight because Tay was spending time with his grandma because it was his grandma's birthday and so my mom rode with me and my stepmom calls while we're while I'm driving and she asked if I was alone I told when I told her it was my mom she was like good you know good so she wanted to speak to my mom but my mom wouldn't tell me what they were speaking about so i already knew that it was bad when we got to the hospital <laughs> um, when we got to the hospital my dad had so many tubes and it was so many tubes y'all it was so many tubes i'm sorry there were so many tubes and I just remember looking at them and I'm just like oh my god like out of all the times I've been to the hospital to see my daddy this was the first time I have seen him with so many tubes I was sitting there talking to him Start talking to him, letting him know, like, Daddy, I'm here, you know, I'm here. Da -da -da. The doctor walks in, and he's like, like, I'm asking him questions about my dad because every time my dad went to the hospital, I was literally there. I wouldn't say every time, but I was there a majority of the time my dad was in the hospital. I would ask the doctors questions. I would ask the nurses questions. Like, I need to know X, Y, and Z, what's going on? What is this medication for? Okay, how often are you giving him this? What did he eat today? You know, I'm in there. I'm, 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 I'm very hands on. And I'm very hands on. And so I just wanted to make sure that my dad knew I wanted him to be okay. I just wanted everything to be all right. So here i am it's been like a year since i've seen my dad and the first time i seen him after a year he had is the day that he passed passed away and that's just not sitting right with me it's just not it's like it's like weighing so deep on my heart y'all like i don't know like i know he wasn't mad at me or anything it's like okay it's just it was a year you know, it was some time. He had asked me if I was coming home for Thanksgiving. I didn't. He had asked me if I was coming home for Christmas. I didn't. So, 
I know that he know that I was up here, you know, taking care of school and, uh, you know, and everything like that because he will always tell me he was proud of me. He will always tell me he was proud of me. Always. He will always tell me that he wanted me to finish school. And if I would go like a week or something without talking to him or calling him back, <clears throat> like he'd call me and be like, you know, I ain't heard from you in a while. Da -da -da. And then I'd be like, yeah, daddy, I've been been really busy with school. Da -da -da. He'd just be like, just keep making me proud or, you know, just keep doing what you do when I understand. Like he, he, he understood that I wasn't just not talking to him, that I wasn't just not answering the phone for him. It was, I was actually doing stuff still not sitting right with me because he asked me to come home for Christmas and I didn't y'all I didn't come home and I just wish like and now Christmas is coming up again and I'm just like <laughs> around this time he will be sending me cologne that he won't like some uh, a, a, a shaver or something that he won't but mo most likely some cologne like he would be sending me things that he won't for christmas at this moment and i would just i remember thinking like oh my god he's so annoying <laughs> he's so annoying like oh my god he's sending me all this but you know i just used to like he is so annoying <laughs> But I miss him being annoying like I miss him comment commenting up under my pictures I miss him like getting on my boyfriend ass like I just miss him <sighs> okay let me rewind so I told y'all how I go up there like I used to go to the doctors all the time still with my dad all of them this time I went in there and I was about to do the same thing, you know. I went in there. I, I wanted to expect him to be hooked up to all those tubes. So I go in there, the doctor walks in, and I start my normal. How's he doing? How's this? How's that? Is he going to be okay? How's his breathing? How's me going and asking all those questions? And then just for the doctor to look at me. he's not going to make it I'm just like I instantly just started crying because like I knew that it was bad but I didn't know it was that bad I'm like my dad he called me the day that he was the day before his surgery I still got the voicemail because he ended up having to leave me a voicemail and I called him right back I still got the voicemail. I've never deleted leave the voicemail. I might even insert the voicemail in here, but he was just like, "Okay, you may call him. It's important." So when I talked to him, he was just. When I called him back. He was just like, "I'm um, I'm having open heart." He said that he was having open heart surgery. He said, I'm having open heart surgery, and I instantly just got to cry because I had already known from school a lot of open heart, like a lot of these surgeries can end badly. Like, I already known this, so I just instantly started crying. And he's like, It's gonna be all right, I'm gonna be okay. He's like, It's gonna be all right, I'm gonna be okay. I got a graduation to make. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. You will be okay. You do. I wanted him to be at my graduation. <sighs> he wanted to be at my graduation. To his, any of his kids to go to a university and to graduate. And I graduated because every time I thought about quitting, I called my mom or my dad. Or my granny. <laughs> my dad, he would encourage me and be like, you, you can't this far. I didn't live, I didn't live in my car. I didn't, I didn't have to work. I didn't got like a whole bunch of stuff. And my dad was like, it's going to make a great story for the people 
to see like for people to see like it's gonna make a great story and i so i'm gonna make a story time on how i kicked off campus <laughs> how i lived in my car for a couple of months y'all like oh my god don't quit like you can't quit just to see all of that happened with my daddy it was traumatizing it was traumatizing um because i'm gonna insert clips of the times that we were in the hospital before this um we were always singing laughing having a good time but what's this time like usually when i walk in he's able to he's like oh, hey kayla hey kayla you know my college daughter something like that but this time I walked in and he couldn't say nothing to me. He had this tear just stuck. <laughs> it was like, he had this tear just like stuck in his, like in the corner of his eye. And like the tear wouldn't fall, it was just stuck. And so I know that he heard everything that everybody was saying. Because I gotta remember when I came up there, it was like, nine o'clock and mind you it was like nine o'clock in the morning when i'm there by the time i left there was it was just me and my mom when i first arrived by the time i left there were like a good 50 plus family members going to say their last goodbyes to my dad and that was a whole process because the doctor was like oh all the due to COVID, the patients can only have one member a day, and I'm just looking at them like, do you not see the circumstances? Like, what do you mean? I'm not the only sibling. I got other siblings that want to say goodbye to my dad, that want to say our last words to our dad. Not even just my blood siblings. I have my step siblings. Okay, it was a lot of us that wanted to say. You know, we wanted to speak with my dad, you know, before it was too late. And I will say in the time that I had with him alone, we had a good conversation, y'all. I was able to tell him things that I had wanted to tell him for years. Like, I, it was already weighing on my mind, like, okay, I wanted to tell him. I wanted to tell him for years like I wanted to just tell him but I just couldn't and I'm like that's not the type of conversation that you want to have over the phone 500 plus miles away no like that's a conversation you need to have in person but I never really got that chance to <sighs> anyways but yeah y'all so I'm not okay right now but I will be. Um, after I lost my dad, then I mean, that morning, you obviously they said that it was a limit on how many people would come in. My little sister Diddy, she has Down syndrome, so she wasn't able to be at the hospital. Um, she wasn't able to be at the hospital because my mom didn't want her like with the COVID stuff, and she also didn't want her to like see my dad in that setting so my aunt Monty Ava <laughs> FaceTimed me and my sister Didi was there so she was able to say she was able to tell my daddy that she loved him and everything like that she was able to say something to my dad but then my auntie Ava wanted to say wanted to say goodbye to my dad and she did but she passed um, a couple months ago and all I keep thinking is in a couple months that would have been said I had just said goodbye but a couple months later they said hello and it just really hurt my heart y'all because I love my family so much and the fact that I'm not getting to spend time with my family like I want to spend time with my family. It hurts. So, as y'all can see, I got them to write right there. 
Let me get myself together and I'm gonna come back. Here's my dad's obituary. Do we look alike? This is my man's, my dad, my old man's, okay? Um, we had this page where like, all, I told y'all he got so many kids. <laughs> he got so many kids, he got God kids, and he also have stepchildren. So like, we all have to say, our remarks on here. Where's mine? Here's mine right here. This is my remark. We had to all say our remarks, and mine said, um, Daddy, no matter what we've been through, you are still and will always be my first love. It hurts to know that you're not here anymore, but I'll always have our memories, jokes, and songs in my heart. We set goals together, and I promise you, we will meet them together. Kayla. So... Yeah, this is that. Um, I got this picture in here from high school. This is my actually my high school graduation. I don't, I don't, I'm going to insert like pictures of my dad and me and my siblings in this YouTube video so that y'all can just get a better understanding. Um, <laughs> like it's just crazy and then of course we have the reflection of life um, let me tell y'all a fun fact about my daddy that I did not know until I read this motherfucking thing so my dad was born in California I did not know that <laughs> like I literally did not know that my dad was born in California in like Los Angeles California I didn't know that like nobody ever told me that so that was very cool to know it was like a fun fact I didn't even know that so yeah y'all here's my stepmom I love her so much I love her so much she's just I appreciate her because she don't treat any of us differently like any of my dad's kids differently um she's been with my dad like through so much in these last couple of years and I just love her so much she's given me great siblings like I love my step siblings like I don't even uh, Consider them my step siblings. I just consider them my siblings. Like I love them so much. Like they mean a lot to me. Like they're they're my family. Like I love them. Oh, I just keep crying. Like I'm an emotional person. I mean I'm emotional as heck. It's just so surreal. So yeah, y'all. He passed away. April twenty fourth, twenty twenty one. And um yeah, that was my dad. I love him so much. I love my dad. Like, I love my aunt. Honestly, y'all, if y'all couldn't tell, all of this stuff is really just really still setting in. Um, when I lost my dad, as y'all can see, April 24th. When I lost him, I was finishing up my junior year. Um, no, I was still in my senior year, but I had to take a summer semester. So I was finishing up senior stuff. Plus, my birthday is May 6th. So my dad passed like two weeks before my birthday. So we made the best out of it. But it was still hard because... I'm used to my dad like making long, long, long Facebook statuses on our birthdays, but my stepmom did it for me. <laughs> and that actually meant a lot. Like, cause I'm used, I'm, that's what I look forward to. I look forward, the first thing I know I'm gonna have is a long shout out status on Facebook from my dad, telling all his Facebook friends to tell me happy birthday. 
so if my stepmom did that this year I just couldn't do anything but cry and like I was just so happy because I my dad is living through her like <laughs> she knows his mannerisms so well that she know like what he would do and how he would do it and when and where he would do it and so the fact that she could I'm sorry y'all the fact that she could still like keep his memory and legacy alive like that as far as like interacting with us as how he did it means a lot just really grateful that she did that but when it came down to my aunt I was looking forward to this y'all um it was surreal I haven't had time to really grieve and to really process everything because when my dad passed I was still in school I was still in school and the only thing that was on my mind was I can't give up now if I give up now he will be so mad I can't give up now I can't I gotta keep pushing like I have to because that's what he wanted that was the, what he wanted from me that's what he expected from me at that time and so yeah I just had to to suck it up buttercup if I did it <laughs> I did it and I just know he's so proud and he's so happy and it just sucks because whenever I got my whenever I found out I was going to graduate I texted him I'll insert the texts in here I've been texting my dad like once a week every day at first it was every day since he passed but then I realized I'm like Kayla that's not really healthy that's not really a, a healthy way of coping so I weaned myself from once a day to once a week to once a month to you know like I'm just trying to I don't know y'all this is the first time I've actually really grieved my dad was a pastor he was very goofy very funny um, he could sing. I got my singing. The the love for music from him. He can. He used to sing all the time. Daddy singing. Because right after I finished my regular courses, I had to start my summer courses. So, and he, his homegoing was May 8th. My birthday is May 6th. So, his homegoing was two days after my birthday. And finals week was the week following that. So, I had to just... No, no, no. Finals week was the week before that. So, I had to just... Pushed through my finals, passed all of them, thank the Lord. And then the next week was the home going. No, that weekend was the home going. And then the next week was the start of the summer course. And so, excuse me, I was just doing my summer courses, you know? So during my summer course is when my Auntie Ava passed. That beautiful face. <laughs> Um, my auntie Ava passed on my summer courses. Um, very, very unexpected, y'all. Like when I say unexpected, and she had, and she was a registered nurse and a nurse practitioner. She, it's still surreal, y'all. She passed away to COVID, and. I'm just grateful because I'm just grateful to even have known her to even have been so close to her like I'm grateful my TT she was so sweet 
she was so nice she would do anything for you if she could and nine times out of ten she could so she would <laughs> but she she was just so so she was a light she helped so many people people that I didn't even know she knew. My auntie loved to travel. She loved to travel and I'm so grateful that this year in February, Tay and I, we were able to go to California. California and Vegas with them, with my aunt, her husband, a couple of my cousins, my mom. Yeah, and yeah, it was just us. And we had this nice Airbnb. It was like my me and Tay first time like ever vacationing with my family. And it was so needed. I reached out to my aunt to make sure like, hey, TT, is this fine? Like, I don't want to just come. Like, you know, she was like, no, no, this would be, that'd be great. You know, we can get to know Tay more. You know, she was excited. She was so, so excited, y'all. And we were too. And... It all worked out because when we got there, we had a great time, y'all. Hey, y'all. Oh, hey, I had got like, I remember, <laughs> I had got, my cousins had me driving the boat in the hot tub, y'all. I'll probably insert a clip of that. My cousins had me driving the boat in the hot tub. And I was cool that night. I didn't throw up none that night. But that next morning, boy, I was over with. And my um, T.T. Ava, she was taking care of me. She took care of me. <laughs> she took care of me while I was throwing up. Like, it was so bad. It was coming out my nose and everything. And she was just like, girl, you were like, <laughs> she was just like, Oh no, you need to stop drinking. Your mama was, wasn't playing when she said you weren't a drinker. Like she was just like going in on me, calling me a lightweight and stuff. But it was also like fun and games and stuff too. And my cousin, her daughter, my cousin T, she was just like, Mama, Mama, what's happening to Kayla? <laughs> Yeah, I was so lit. It was a good day. I mean, not the throwing up part. It was so bad. But other than that, I had such a good time. Like, I had such a good time. And my auntie made this seafood boil. But I'm allergic to seafood. But she had the Benadryls on deck because she a nurse. So, boy, she gave me the best Benadryls. And Benadryls put me to sleep. Every time, like, she always have the best medication. Like, and she literally gave me some Benadryl to help with um, my allergic reaction and stuff like that. And I still got like two Benadryl left that she had gave me from February back in Cal when we was in California. And I'm just going to keep on to those because I'm just going to hold on to those because I'm like, that's the good shit, first of all. And it came from my TT. It came from my TT and... I know I would never get any other Benadryls like that. Like, <laughs> I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I'm getting emotional. I just remember, like, I see her come out. And I'm like, I love you. Like, I wanted to hug her so bad. But I, we couldn't. So I'm just like, I love you, TT. You look beautiful. She gave me a little smile. But obviously, she wasn't feeling her best. But I just wanted to make sure I let her know that I loved her. And that she was beautiful. Because my auntie, she was a a bbw but honey you couldn't tell her nothing she was the finest bbw she kept her toes done her nails done she always did her little clip on whatever she was clipping on like she just made sure she stayed up to par made sure she stayed cool and she's the reason why i have so much self-confidence because when i was younger she used to do my hair and she would just speak so much life into me while she was doing my hair like Kelly you're so beautiful you're so pretty like she would just speak life into me and make me more confident in myself and I love her so much longer suffering they're in God's hands and that's what the both of them have been working for to to be able to be accepted into the kingdom and for god to say well done my good and faithful servant because my auntie she also preached 
uh, I was raised in a church. We were all raised in a church. My auntie was raised in a church, all of that. So, well, she wasn't raised in a church. Was she raised in a church? I don't think my grandma was in a church. But we were all raised in church. All my cousins was raised in church. All of my siblings were raised in church. It was like we, we were raised in church. So we know that God is going to call us home one day. But it's just hurtful because you don't know the day that he's going to call you home. And just because we know that God is going to call you home don't mean that we're prepared for God to call you home, you know. But yes, y'all. I just wanted to give y'all some insight on my life. So, oh, and my auntie's um, obituary was kind of stood out the same way. My tinty has so many grandchildren, y'all. Like, she has so many grandkids. Oh, my God. It was so many of them. And she adored her grandchildren. So, she adored her grandkids, my little cousin. So, I just know she would have been in love with my baby cousin right here. And so, yeah, y'all. I just wanted to come on here and be transparent with you guys. I know a lot of people lost people um, this year, last year, due to COVID, not due to COVID, just in general. And I just want to let y'all know that y'all are not alone. Like, y'all are not alone. Um, we gonna get through this. We gonna get through this. It might be hard, it might be tedious, but I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, we will get through it. And if we can't get through it, we'll be able to cope with it because we'll have the love from our loved ones that passed away to keep us going. And I know that they're still with me. I know that they are still looking down on me. Um, so sometimes I even just talk to them like they're here, you know, I might even look at their, um, pictures or their obituaries and be like, well, let me tell you this, or I can't believe that this happened, or let me tell you about my day. How was, how was heaven, goddamn, you know? And let y'all see this part of me. Let y'all know that I'm not okay, but I will be okay. Like, I just got out of school and stuff like that, so right now it's nothing keeping me busy to keep my mind off of the loss of of them so um yeah i'm happy that i even got to know them that they were my family that they were a part of my life you know that i have so many stories with the both of them that i have so many good memories with the both of them. Honestly, I feel better now that I've recorded all of this because I just feel like maybe I need to talk to somebody about it. Like, Tay knows that I'm hurting. Tay knows all of this. He's been to both home goings with me. Like, so he knows, like, and he met both of them. Like, so he knows I'm hurting. I could talk to him about it, but at the same time, I just don't want to put all of my emotions, all of my problems, all of my burdens and everything on him because I know he's dealing with stuff as well. And, um, yeah, so it just, I just feel better now that I've gotten this video out. It's okay to seek therapy. It's okay to seek counseling. It's okay to seek all of that because I will be seeking counseling i will be seeking therapy i will be seeking all that and getting myself together in order to work with people you know um because you have to be okay or at least all right to be able to work with people throughout their problems because you don't want to start working with these people you haven't figured out your problems and now you have also taken on their problems and now you can't separate your problems from their problems and then you gotta find that balance okay so that's what i'm doing now because i do want to go back and get my master's because that was something my, my dad and i talked about me going back to get my master's so i plan on doing that in january so i just want to get myself okay together mentally okay before i go back 
to school and before I start working with people because I want to give them the best care. I want to give them the best assistance. I want to I want to be the best for those people, for my clients, you know? I want to be like her. She helped so many people through her nursing. She helped so many people through all her... She ministered to so many people through all her nursing, just through all her personality. She... Were able, she was able to draw so many people in. Like I said, y'all, it's a lot of bad things happening this year. But there's also a lot of blessings that happened this year as well. And so with the help of my guardian angels and my grandma, my grandpa, and everyone else in heaven and my cousin Chanella, I got this, you know, I got this. I know I'm okay. And with the help of and support of my remaining family members I know I'm all right because I got y'all y'all got me we got each other <laughs> so yeah y'all so I just want to let y'all know there's nothing wrong with therapy there's nothing wrong with being vulnerable there's nothing wrong with crying there's nothing wrong with letting your feelings and your emotions take over every now and then there's nothing wrong with it okay I just want to get this video out so that I'm able to make new content for y'all like i want to make new content like i really 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 want to make new content but i have to let y'all know what was going on with me so that if we do make new content y'all won't be like ah why her energy off or ah why she looking like this or ah she seems snappy or she seems moody like i just want to let y'all know like i'm dealing with a lot of stuff even like stuff that happened after the fact like i'm dealing with it I'm dealing with it um when my dad passed away there was a lot of trauma that revisit like there was a lot of revisited trauma there was a lot of um trauma that I had thrown away in the really bad in the really deep compartments of my brain but just seeing the people or individuals who caused that trauma made it reflur. I mean, made it flur back up again, you know? And so I'm dealing with all of that. Um, I'm dealing with school, dealing with um, a lot of stuff, okay? <laughs> a lot of stuff, my mental health, everything. So I just want to let y'all know that we are back. We are back. And also, I wanna thank y'all for staying with us sticking with us all the other stuff after this video should be fun uplifting content but i just wanted to get this out to y'all so y'all can know i'm still here but sometimes i be spaced okay i'm here but i'm not here sometimes but i'm here i'm most definitely here okay but yeah y'all make sure y'all like comment and subscribe to the channel um i know this video was something different but it's okay to be transparent with each other it's okay don't let nobody tell y'all that y'all can't show your emotions or anything like that like it's all right um but until next time tk game the vibe is still strong might be a little thrown up in this video but it's all good y'all i love y'all stay safe take care of your mental health take care of yourself take care of your family take care of your loved ones i love y'all hey handsome i'm so happy i found you